So I have wanted to do this episode for a while, several months now, but I knew I couldn't just do it. I knew that if I just did an episode on the subject, it would be surface, that we would need to go deeper in order for you to really get something out of this. So I spent the time so that I could be an authority on the subject, or at least somewhat of an authority, so, so I could at least speak confidently on the subject. Now, and what is the subject we're talking about today? We're talking about AI, specifically ChatGPT. What is ChatGPT? ChatGPT is an open source piece of software. It is a chat of the highest uh, form, right? Chatbot of the highest order. Uh, very, very intelligent. Really, the the, the cutting edge uh, of what this uh, of what this software can do. And if you've been living under a rock and you've really never heard the term ChatGPT, don't worry. I'm going to bring you up to speed and tell you everything you need to know. But I'm guessing that most of you guys listening to this or watching this uh, know what ChatGPT is. You've at least uh, read the headlines. You've uh, seen news articles. Uh, you, you've read blog posts, you've heard people talking about it. And what I think you guys care about, rightfully so, is should I be paying attention to this? Why should I care? And most importantly, can I use it to do my job more efficiently or effectively? And the answer to all those things is yes. I think you should care about, I think you can be using it, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to use it. So again, no matter where you are on the spectrum here, if you've never heard of this before or if you feel like you're an expert, I think there's real value in today's episode. I'm gonna go really deep. I'm gonna really share with you my experience with ChatGPT, specifically uh, what I typed in, what I said to it, what it spit back. A lot of times I'm gonna share with you verbatim what it told me, uh, how it answered my questions. I'm gonna show you some real life applications because I sort of figured out some ways that I could use it. And then we're gonna spend a little time talking about the future of software like this, how we might be able to use it in the future. And I think the future is really exciting, not as scary as we'd like to believe, but I think at least in the, the near term, I think there's a lot of a lot of reasons for us to get excited about this. So talking all about ChatGPT on today's episode of Restaurant Strategy, don't go anywhere. There's an old saying that goes something like this, you'll only find three kinds of people in the world, those who see, those who will never see, and those who can see when shown. This is Restaurant Strategy, a podcast with answers for anyone who's looking. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name is Chip Close and this is Restaurant Strategy a podcast dedicated entirely to the hospitality industry. We cover marketing, operations, and just about everything in between. Each week, I leverage my 20 plus years in the industry to help you build a more profitable and a more sustainable business. I also work directly with operators all over the world through my P3 Mastermind program. What are the three Ps? They stand for profit, process, and progress. So if you've got a busy restaurant but are struggling to generate consistent, predictable profits, 20% profits every month, then please set up a free 30-minute strategy session. We'll get to learn more about you and your restaurant. You'll get to ask some questions and see if you're a good fit for the program. The best way to get started is to visit restaurantstrategypodcast.com slash schedule. Again, profit is quite literally the only thing that matters in your business. Once you have a profitable restaurant, you can talk about growing that restaurant, or you can talk about stepping away from that restaurant, or even just coming in to dine at that restaurant instead of bussing tables or jumping back behind the line. So again, if you are uh, if you are running a busy restaurant but struggling with uh, profitability, with, with generating consistent, predictable profits, then you're not alone, and I promise you we can help. Again, set up a free 30-minute call by visiting restaurantstrategypodcast.com slash schedule. As always, you will find that link in the show notes. Now, are you frustrated with managing your catering and private events with pen and paper or outdated systems? Introducing Triple Seat, the catering sales and event management software built for hospitality professionals by hospitality professionals. With Triple Seat, you will increase revenue and efficiency all while streamlining your operations. Let Triple Seat be your catering and event management assistant. Generate leads, create tailored banquet event orders, facilitate online discussions, uh, obtain electronic signatures, process payments, and everything else you need, Triple Seat has you covered. Elevate and simplify your event management and take it to the next level with Triple Seat so you can focus on what truly matters, providing unforgettable experience for your clients. 
For more information, visit TripleSeat.com slash Restaurant Strategy. That's TripleSeat.com slash Restaurant Strategy. That link is also in the show notes. Now, as I said at the top, today I want to talk about ChatGPT, and I want to talk about what it means for our industry. But first things first, because some of you out there, I'm sure, are thinking this, what the hell is ChatGPT? So you might have heard about it, right? You, you, you've read the headlines, you've seen it on the news, uh, you, you read blog posts, but perhaps you're still a little fuzzy on the subject. Totally fine. So here is a definition as provided by ChatGPT itself. What is ChatGPT? That's what I typed into the chatbot. It said, ChatGPT is a large-scale language model developed by OpenAI. That's the name of the company, OpenAI. It is part of the GPT, Generative Pre-Trained Transformer family of models, and is designed to generate human-like responses to text-based inputs. ChatGPT is trained on a massive amount of text data and uses deep learning techniques to generate responses that are contextually relevant and grammatically correct. It can be used for a wide range of natural language processing tasks such as text generation, summarization, translation, and conversation. ChatGPT has been used in various applications, including customer service chatbots, virtual assistants, and language learning tools. Its ability to generate natural sounding text has made it a popular choice for businesses and developers looking to create more engaging and personalized experiences for their users. That's literally what the system told me. I just typed in, what is ChatGPT? I hit enter, and that's what it spit out. So. How do you access ChatGPT, right? This is another question. I've heard about it. Where do I get it? Very simple. Go to chat.openai.com or openai.com will also lead you to there. That's where you're going to um that's when you're going to where you're going to access it. You will have to register, meaning you're going to input your email address and you're going to create a password, but don't worry. The software is 100% free to use. Now, once you're in, uh, you'll find it's just a couple of example prompts uh, and a search field, right? So just like Google, there's just a search field. But above that, unlike Google, there's a, there's a couple of prompts, ways you might be able to use it, right? Try this, try that, try this. Because it's trying to teach you, the user, right? Who All of us are sort of unfamiliar with this. And it's teaching you how you might be able to use it, um, uh, you know, exercises, ways that you can, ways that you can use it, right? Um, much like Google, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't start working until you actually type in something and hit return. Um, but basically, this is a chatbot, again, of the utmost intelligence, really, truly uncanny. And you just ask it a question, and it'll spit out an answer. For example, let's get started. I'm going to show you some of the things that I typed in. I typed in, explain in simple terms the best way to market a restaurant. And the response that came back, literally, this is verbatim from the website. The best way to market a restaurant is to build a strong online presence and create a positive word of mouth buzz. Here are some simple steps to get started. One, develop a website. Create a website with a menu, photos, and contact information. Make sure it's easy to navigate and mobile friendly. Two, claim your listings, meaning claim your business on Google, Yelp, and other popular review sites. Respond to customer reviews and make sure your information is up to date and accurate. Three, use social media. Use social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to showcase your food, events, and promotions. Engage with followers and share user-generated content. Number four, offer promotions. Offer promotions such as happy hour specials or discounts for first-time customers. This can incentivize people to try your restaurant and spread the word. And number five, collaborate with influencers. Collaborate with local influencers or food bloggers to help promote your restaurant. Offer them a complimentary meal or experience in exchange for a review or a social media post. Remember, the key is to provide excellent food, service, and atmosphere as satisfied customers are the best marketing tool for any restaurant. That's literally what ChatGPT wrote. So again, my question was, my prompt was, explain in simple terms the best way to market a restaurant. And the response came back with five bullet points. Develop a website, claim your listings, use social media, offer promotions, and collaborate with influencers. Is that everything you're supposed to do to market your restaurant? No, but I think it's a really good start. And so what happens is ChatGPT scours the internet, you know, millions and billions, billions of pages of text all over the internet, 
blog posts, websites, uh, 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 podcasts, um, YouTube channels, everything. It's, it's, it's collecting all of that data and spitting out a response. Now, am I gonna uh, am I gonna open a restaurant and just do what ChatGPT tells me? No, but it's a really good start. And even if you just did those first five things, um, that would be a pretty good start. And I'm guessing what you could do then afterwards is type in and say, great, I've done those things. What should I do next? And guess what? ChatGPT is going to spit out an answer. I didn't ask that. I should have. Um, but that's how you use it. So that's the first thing I asked, right? Or here's a different prompt that I gave it, right? I asked it specifically. It's exactly what I asked it. How can restaurant owners use ChatGPT to market their businesses? And this is what the system came back and gave me. Restaurant owners can use ChatGPT to market their businesses in the following ways. Personalized marketing. ChatGPT can be used to create personalized marketing messages for customers based on their preferences and past behavior. For example, a chatbot could use ChatGPT to suggest menu items or promotions based on a customer's past orders or interests. Social media marketing. ChatGPT can be integrated with social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter to automate social media marketing. A chatbot could use ChatGPT to create and post social media content, respond to content, uh, comments, and engage with customers. Email marketing. ChatGPT can be used to create personalized email marketing campaigns for customers. A chatbot could use ChatGPT to generate email content that is tailored to each customer's preferences and interests. Number four here, the fourth bullet point, chatbot advertising. ChatGPT can be used to create chatbot advertising campaigns that are more engaging and personalized than traditional ads. A chatbot could use ChatGPT to generate conversation-based ads that feel more like a natural conversation with a friend than a traditional ad. And then finally, the fifth bullet point says SEO optimization. ChatGPT can be used to optimize website content for search engines by analyzing customer queries and search patterns. A chatbot could use ChatGPT to suggest changes to website and content that could improve its search ranking. Overall, ChatGPT can help restaurant owners create more engaging and personalized marketing experiences for their customers. However, it is important to note that the success of ChatGPT marketing campaigns will depend on a variety of factors, including the quality of the underlying data, the accuracy of the model, and the overall effectiveness of the marketing strategy. Okay, so that's okay, right? All of, all of that's right, but then of course the question goes, where would we go from there, right? And, and can ChatGPT get us there? Well, what I did was I focused in on just the last bullet point. I'll remind you, the last bullet point was all about SEO optimization. So I focused in there and ChatGPT was telling us to use the software to improve SEO. So I went to one of my client's websites and I asked ChatGPT to improve the copy on their About Us page with SEO in mind. Literally, I typed in. Now, uh, I went to uh, Gotham, New York. Uh, Gotham is 39 years young. I worked there for eight years. It was really the last restaurant where I was fully in working. I handled all their marketing for years up until uh, the pandemic. So I went to their website. I copied the About Us uh, text. And then this is what I typed into the chatbot. I said, please improve the following copy with SEO in mind. And then uh, I simply copied the and pasted the text from the web page. And here's what it spit out. And it gave me a more, um, and it gave me a, an optimized version of what was there, right? So the about, and, and again, it kept uh, readability. Um, it it uh, kept readability in mind and also, um, uh, and also uh, SEO in mind, uh, so keywords, things like that. So again, I copied and pasted, and then I just said, please improve the following copy with SEO in mind. And then I saw what it spit out, and it spit out a much more uh, reader-friendly version. In fact, at the end, it spit out all this stuff, and then at the very end, it says, the improved copy includes more relevant keywords such as restaurant, green dining, world-class dining, wine dinners, culinary history, and sustainability, meaningful ex dining experiences, and New York. All of those are key keywords to Gotham, Gotham, New York. Gotham has been an institution in New York City for 39 years. And then ChatGPT went on. It says, sentence structure has been simplified for readability purposes. Additionally, the use of subheadings and bullet points could help to break up the text and make it even more scannable for both readers and search engines. Perhaps consider breaking up the text with future edits. 
So it did what I asked to do, and then it gave me the next steps. It basically said, I'm not gonna go any further than you asked me to do, but this is something I might do. I could go back into the chat, because it's a chat bot, right? I ask it a question, it spits out an answer. I could ask it another question, or a further question, uh, or to develop further, I could type back in, I say, um, please split up the text you created, separate it with subheadings or bullet points, and I would see, uh, and I would see what, it, what it would do. Now, it's really important to note, as I was planning this episode, originally I thought I would simply have the program write this entire episode for me. I thought that would be uh, weird and cool. But uh, the further I dove in, the less realistic that that seemed. And, and I'll explain why in just a second. But I'll tell you what I learned by putting this together. And it has everything to do with how you can use this as a valuable resource to help you market your restaurant. Again, more real life, uh, tangible applications of this software. And I'm going to talk to you about what happened when I, uh, when I prompted it to write an entire episode for me. Um, just a minute, just after a word from another one of our sponsors. Now, running a restaurant is already a tough job. You're, you're busy keeping customers fed and employees paid while working with razor thin profit margins. The last thing you should be worried about is if you're doing sales tax right. That's why you should consider automating sales tax for your restaurant point of sale system. Collecting and filing sales tax on your own can be stressful and time consuming. It can leave your business vulnerable to accidentally missing tax payments or not having enough money in the bank to cover your tax obligations. Davo by Avalara simplifies sales tax for your restaurant and brings peace of mind through automation to help you pay the full amount you owe on time. Just integrate the Davo app with your existing POS like Clover, Toast, Square, or Spot On and set up your business and banking information. Davo will take sales data from your POS system and determine how much sales tax you collected each day. Then it sends a request to your bank to have your sales tax put into a secure holding account. This keeps your sales tax separate from your revenue and helps reduce potential confusion about available funds. You'll get a daily email from Davo letting you know exactly how much sales tax was transferred. When your sales tax is due, Davo automatically remits your sales tax to the appropriate authority on your behalf in full and on time. Is your restaurant in a state that does on-time filing discounts? If it is, then Davo will automatically send this refund back to your bank. Don't let sales tax spoil your business. Stay on top of sales tax with automation from Davo by Avalara so you can spend less time in the back office and more time in the front of house. Learn more at davosalestax.com slash restaurant strategy and try Davo free for the first month. As always, you'll find that link in the show notes. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, originally I thought I would ask ChatGPT to write an entire episode for me, right? Awesome, I won't have to think of what to say. The system will just do the hard part for me. But I was wrong. It spit out canned, somewhat formulaic copy that lacked personality and lacked creativity. Two things that I do think I have. But of course the system doesn't know me, right? At least not right now. Maybe eventually I could feed it transcripts from all 219 episodes and it would get to understand my vocal tendencies, my cadence, my sense of humor. And perhaps that'll come one day. In fact, I've got to believe it will. But in my opinion, open AI systems like this, like ChatGPT, will never be truly creative. And that's because it can only pull from the data that it's fed. So by definition, it will not think outside the box. It will only pull from solutions that already exist in the world, which has a great deal of value, absolutely. And ultimately, it will, it will help us but it will never be as innovative and interesting as we want it to be. But I think we, we can have it to do simpler things for us, which will then free us up to do the really human, hard, creative work that we were put on this planet to do. So by asking it to do simpler things, I, I, can, I think it can succeed brilliantly. For example, in helping us be more efficient in our jobs, right? Great example is that it can write simple informational blog posts for us. Feed it the details of an event that you have coming up. Tell it how long the blog post should be, what you'd like to highlight, and bam, it will get the job done. Then you can just be the editor, right? Reviewing the work of the computer, making tweaks as needed, instead of having to build a 500 or, or 1,000 word blog post from scratch. And yes, you better believe it, I fed it a prompt just to show you how this example might work, right? For this, again, I turned to Gotham, again, Gotham, uh, New York. Here in New York City, uh, I spent eight years there working. Uh, I ran all their marketing. I did a lot of blog posts for them. Um, 
The pandemic forced the place to close temporarily. Now they are reopened. So they've been reopened for, I don't know, a year and a half or so. They have an upcoming jazz dinner, right? So they've been doing this jazz uh, dinner series, and they've got an upcoming jazz dinner with a budding star, Kristen Lee Sargent. And so what I did is I went and grabbed the details from their website, and I let ChatGPT do the rest. So I said, write me a 500-word blog post to help me promote my upcoming jazz dinner at Gotham, New York, in New York City. The details are as follows. And I copied and pasted the date, the time, the uh, the artists who are going to be performing, what instruments, what all of that, and this is what they came up with, literally, verbatim. Gotham, New York, the iconic restaurant located at 12 East 12th Street in New York City, is proud to present a special jazz dinner event on March 23rd at 9:30 p.m. featuring the talented Kristen Lee Sargent. As a singer-songwriter and for, uh, former Gotham sommelier, Kristen will be performing an after-hours set of original songs and standards accompanied by some of the most acclaimed jazz musicians in the industry. Join us for a night of live music, delicious food, and exquisite wine pairings as we celebrate the arrival of spring in style. Whether you're a jazz aficionado or simply looking for a memorable night out, this event promises to deliver an unforgettable experience for all. The evening's performance will showcase Kristen Lee Sargent's extraordinary talent as she performs her own original compositions alongside classic jazz standards. With her soulful voice and mesmerizing stage presence, Kristen has been described as one of the most promising young artists in the jazz scene today. She'll be joined by a stellar lineup of musicians including Ted Nash on sax, Jeb Patton on piano, and Hannah Marks on bass, all of whom have earned critical acclaim for their outstanding contributions to the jazz genre. To complement the music, Gotham, New York's renowned chefs have prepared a special menu featuring a variety of tantalizing dishes that are sure to please every palate. From appetizers to entrees, each dish is carefully crafted with the finest ingredients and innovative techniques, resulting in a culinary experience that is both unforgettable and uniquely Gotham. Guests can choose to reserve for dinner or just drinks with entrance priced at $45. Whether you're looking to indulge in a gourmet meal, enjoy a few drinks with friends, or simply experience the best of New York's jazz scene, this event promises to be a highlight of the season. To reserve your spot at Gotham, New York's jazz dinner event featuring Kristen Lee Sargent, simply visit our website or call us at the following number. Don't miss out on this extraordinary opportunity to celebrate spring in style with the finest jazz and cuisine that New York has to offer. We look forward to seeing you there. Now, I got to tell you, I was blown away. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. One thing to note, right? Ted Nash, uh, Ted Nash on sax is huge. He's a Grammy Award winning composer and arranger, a very big deal. That's worth talking about. If we were to um, embellish this uh, embellish this blog post, we'd probably talk more about his accolades and, and of course, with the other musicians as well. Um, Kristen is also currently promoting her third album with a, with a whole Northeast tour. So that's also something worth celebrating, at least mentioning. Um, I might add a link to her website, maybe even try to embed an audio player so that uh, users navigating the website could hear some of her music to know what they're getting into, to know what they could expect. So again, is this blog post perfect? No, but it literally spit it out in 30 seconds. So it could probably save the marketing team at least 30 to 45 minutes of work. They can jump right into the editing part where they can make this thing really pop. The system, ChatGPT, did all the easy work. So again, for SEO purposes, we're just trying to get this out into the world so the internet knows it exists, so that the internet can talk about it, so that the, the Google spiders, the Google crawlers um, can, can, can put it in different places and drive traffic to it when people are looking for jazz dinner in New York City or, or, or jazz in, in New York City, right? So already this post, again, is uh, optimized for SEO and readability. And, and it doesn't try to do too much. Again, it's, it's sort of formulaic and straightforward. So we're not gonna post this exactly as is, but man, they just took 45 minutes of writing work, at least, and did it in 30 seconds. And now we can just jump right to the last 10 or 15 minutes where we just, uh, where we just edit it. So again, back when I was marketing for Gotham, I did one of these blog posts every single week, and they took me about an hour or two, right? So between ideation, writing, and editing, it was probably all told, 90 minutes to two hours, right? And now it was worthwhile because there was a lot that we wanted to talk about. We wanted to sort of own certain areas on the internet. We wanted to sort of improve our SEO in certain areas. And that was the best way that we knew how to do it. Now here's an easy way. They've got an event coming up. They want to do a blog post about it. So maybe they do the blog post. So maybe they go through, they edit this, and then they send an email 
to their list, right? And they talk about it, say, you know, we'd like to invite you to a jazz dinner, blah, blah, blah. Click here to learn more and to buy tickets, right? Click here to learn more and re reserve your spot. So they would click here, go to the blog post, right? They'd click the email, go to the blog post, and this is what they read. They would read a, a, a sort of version of this. It doesn't try to do too much, but this a blog post like this doesn't have to do too much. So for the owner or operator who says they just don't have time, they're wearing too many hats, here we go. I took an hour long or two hour long exercise and the, uh, and the system did it in about 30 seconds. I'm not even kidding. They spit out all of that in under 30 seconds. And if you really didn't have time to edit, copy and paste, throw that on a blog, put that in an email, send it out. And I could have told this. Now, condense all this information, summarize this into a 100 word uh, email that I could send to my list, and it would do just that. ChatGPT, uh, even just there, even, even just for that, can help us considerably. Now, I went one further. I went and started looking at Gotham's menu, and I typed into the chatbot, write me a menu description for the following item. Now, on, the, uh, on their website, on their menu, it says, yellowfin tuna tartare, ginger yuzu vinaigrette, shiso togarashi cracker. That's what it says. So I copied and pasted that, and I said, write me a menu description, description for the following item. And here's the description for yellowfin tuna tartare that uh, ChatGPT threw out with SEO in mind. Savor the exquisite flavors of the ocean with our yellowfin tuna tartare, delicately diced and served with a refreshing ginger yuzu vinaigrette. This dish is a true culinary masterpiece. We've added the papa flavor with fresh shiso, a Japanese herb known for its minty and citrusy notes, topped with a crispy togarashi cracker. This dish is a delight for both the palate and the eyes. Indulge in the richness of the tuna, the tanginess of the vinaigrette, and the crunch of the cracker all in one bite. Perfect as an appetizer or a light meal, our yellowfin tuna tartare is a must-try dish for seafood lovers. Come and savor the taste of the ocean with us today. Possible SEO keywords for this menu description include quote unquote yellowfin tuna tartare, ginger yuzu vinaigrette, shiso, togarashi cracker, Japanese herb, light meal, seafood lovers, and ocean flavors. Now, am I going to put this menu description on my menu? Absolutely not. But could I send an email with a picture of our new tuna tartare dish and amend what the computer just wrote so I could say introducing our new uh, our new tuna tartare and then put some version of what was there yeah I probably could and it would probably work really well now here is where we go one further remember I told you in the beginning we were going to go deep and then deeper and then deeper still so here I just gave it the I fed it the description the menu description for um the tuna tartare I asked for a you know for a menu description that would be a little bit broader now I went in and I said, write 10 possible social media captions for the menu item, cavatelli, mushroom duxel, shelburne cheddar, morels. So this is another dish on the Gotham menu. It's a cavatelli, so pasta dish. And I said, write 10 possible social media captions for the menu item. And it literally numbered one through 10. Number one, satisfy your cravings with our flavorful cavatelli served with mushroom duxel and sh uh, shelburne cheddar. Hashtag comfort food goals, hashtag foodie, hashtag Gotham, New York. Two, experience the perfect blend of creamy and earthy flavors with our cavatelli and morels dish. Hashtag yum, hashtag food porn, hashtag Gotham, New York. Number three, our cavatelli is the ultimate comfort food in its rich mushroom duxel and cheesy shelburne cheddar. Hashtag delicious. Hashtag Gotham, New York. Number four, take a culinary journey with our flavorful cavatelli made with fresh ingredients and morels. On and on and on. Number six, just to now cherry pick a little bit. Six, looking for a delicious vegetarian option? Try our cavatelli with mushroom duxel with Shelburne cheddar. Hashtag vegetarian food. Hashtag Gotham, New York. All the way down to number 10. Take your taste budge on a journey with our perfectly crafted cavatelli dish with made with the finest ingredients. Hashtag food adventure. Hashtag Gotham, New York. So there you go, 10 potential uh, uh, social media things. So if you're lacking creativity, if you're burnt out, you're fried, you don't know what else to say about your menu, write in here, get them to make you a couple of prompts. Then you can take one of those prompts, you can use it exactly as is, or you can continue to tweak, but they've sort of like gotten stuff on the page for you. Now what I did, after those 10 prompts, I said, uh, then I typed in, can you write me a funny caption of the dish listed above? ChatGPT wrote back, sure, here's a funny caption for the dish. Quote, unquote, warning, our cavatelli with mushroom, mushroom duxel, shelburne cheddar, and morels is so good, you might want to lick the plate clean. We won't judge. We've all been there. With them, one of those emoji with the tongue sticking out and the wink. 
Hashtag foodie humor. Hashtag Gotham, New York. So there you go. They wrote a funny, uh, a funny uh, uh, caption. Are you going to use it? I don't know, but they gave you an idea. Then I gave the prompt, please write me a witty caption. Sure, here's a witty caption for the dish. Who says comfort food can't be fancy? Our cavatelli with mushroom d'Excel, Shelburne cheddar, and morels will have you feeling all posh and cozy at the same time. And then an emoji of cheese and an emoji of a mushroom. Hashtag fancy but not too fancy. Hashtag Gotham, New York. So right there, if you're looking for inspiration, ideas for how to uh, uh, build and evolve uh, your, um, your social media handles to bring a sense of humor, to bring a new perspective to it, there you go. Give me 10 possible uh, captions. Give me a funny caption. Give me a witty caption. And I'm guessing I could have said, please write me 10 witty captions for the dish. Please write me 10 funny captions for the dish. And they would have spit out 10. There are ways to use this that are really, really cool. Now, I want to round up by uh, with a couple of things. Uh, what I asked it originally, I went in and I said, and literally this is the prompt I wrote. I said, please write me a 30-minute podcast episode featuring 10, uh, 10 ways that restaurant owners can use ChatGPT in their restaurants. And now, it didn't quite give me a 30-minute episode, probably more like a 7-minute episode. But what it did, it did give me 10 bullet points, basically the 10 bullet points I asked for. And so I do want to share those with you because I think there's I think there's value here. And and again, I, I went a little deeper on some of them just to show you. So this is what ChatGPT wrote verbatim. Welcome to this episode of the Restaurant Strategy Podcast. Today we'll be discussing 10 ways that restaurant owners can use ChatGPT in their restaurants. Number one, menu recommendations. ChatGPT can be trained to understand customers' preference and uh suggest personalized menu items based on their previous orders, dietary restrictions, and taste preferences. Number two, table reservations. ChatGPT can be integrated with the restaurant's reservation system to allow customers to make table reservations through a chatbot. This will provide a convenient and seamless experience for customers, reducing wait times and increasing customer satisfaction. So now I paused right there and I said, I typed in, how can I use ChatGPT as a chatbot to book reservations for guests in my restaurant? Because I was curious about what they had just said. And they came back and said, great question, exclamation point. Here's how you can use ChatGPT as a chatbot to book reservations for guests in your restaurant. First, choose a chatbot plat platform. The first step is to choose a platform uh, to build your chatbot on. There are several chatbot platforms available, such as Dialogflow, Microsoft Bot Framework, and IBM Watson Assistant. Choose the one that best, su best suits your needs. Next, design the conversation flow. You'll need to design the conversation flow for your chatbot. This includes the questions the chatbot will ask guests, such as the date and time of your reservation, the number of guests, and any special requests. Uh, next, integrate the reservation system. Once you have the conversation flow designed, you'll need to integrate the chatbot with your reservation system. This can be done using APIs that allow the chatbot to access your reservation system and check for available tables. Test and refine. After integrating the chatbot with your reservation system, you'll certainly need to test it to make sure it's working properly. Test the chatbot to have it uh, book reservations for guests and make sure that the information is being correctly processed and stored in your system. Refine the conversation flow as needed to improve the guest experience. And then finally, promote the chatbot. Promote your chatbot to your customers. Make sure they know that they can book uh, reservations through the chatbot and provide instructions on how to do so. You can also use social media and other marketing channels to promote the chatbot and encourage guests to use it to book their reservations. Perfect example of this is uh, find a chatbot uh, that can be embedded into your website instead of them going in, uh, to the reservation thing. They can go to the chatbot, ask questions. One of the questions they can ask is, hey, how do I order online food? Or how do I book a reservation? And the chatbot says, I'm happy to help you book that reservation. And again, you integrate it in that way. Again, so that's just the second bullet point, and that gives you an example of how I might have built out an entire uh, entire episode, right? Number three, the bullet point that they gave me when I asked them to build a podcast episode for me, uh, they said online ordering. They said ChatGPT can be used to facilitate online orders. Customers can place orders, customize their orders, and pay for them all through the chatbot. This can help restaurants to increase their revenue and reduce the need for human interaction. So again, I went deeper here and I asked the chatbot, uh, I asked ChatGPT, specifically, how can I use ChatGPT to improve online ordering in my restaurant? And again, they gave me step by step. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 steps 
for how I might go about integrating a chatbot into my website to help facilitate online orders. And we went on and on from there. Number four, they talked about customer feedback, how they can respond to reviews on your behalf. Number five was special deals, was about putting together special promotions, discounts, um, and 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 deals for uh, customers and, and sort of specifically cater them um, to people's things. They talked about language translation. You could translate menus either on your website or in real life. Um, they talked about staff scheduling. Chat GPT can be used to manage schedules. Man, we're getting hammered by labor continually. So what if you had your Chat GPT said, you know, please, uh, please schedule, you know, please build me a schedule that does the following things and stays on budget. You just let the computer do that, man. What does that save you? Two, three hours out of your week? Uh, ChatGPT can uh, be used for food allergy information, again, for restaurant reviews, uh, on and on. I even went deeper on that one. I said, how can I use ChatGPT to monitor and respond to online reviews of my restaurant? And guess what? They spit out a six-part plan for how I can integrate them so that they can respond to Google reviews, Facebook reviews, and Yelp reviews. And finally, the 10th one, right? They asked about uh, food, deli- uh, they recommend food delivery. ChatGPT can be used to facilitate food delivery. That's what the system told me. So customers can place orders and track their delivery directly through the chatbot. This can help restaurants increase revenue, provide a more convenient and seamless experience for the guests. And then they wound up that at the end of the 10 bullet points, they said, so there you have it. 10 ways that restaurant owners can use ChatGPT in their restaurants. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Restaurant Strategy Podcast. We hope you found this information helpful. Until next time. So not perfect. I certainly wouldn't say, hey, ChatGPT, please write my episode and I will just read that on air. It's not going to it's not going to work. But it gave me a place to start, right? It gave me, what it did is it gave me a bunch of things and then I had questions about those things. I simply asked those questions and they gave me further information. Now I have further information to have uh, more meaningful conversations with my technology partners, right? I could go to my POS system. I could go to my reservation system. I could go and say, hey, I wanna use ChatGPT. I didn't know I could do it. Now I'm understanding I can do it. What are the API integrations? What what else do I need to make this happen? Do you have any test cases, any use cases? Are there other clients who are doing this? I'd love to see the, the results they get. I'd love to talk to them. How can we integrate them, right? The idea is that this can be used to, to, to do some of the more menial tasks, like writing social media captions, like writing blog posts, like embellishing your menu, writing emails, like uh, booking reservations or taking online order uh, online orders, facilitating them um, more easily. All of this is very exciting. And even if that just cuts out five or 10 hours of your week, whether it's your work or five or 10 hours of human hours, right? 10 times 20, that's 200 bucks a week, 200 bucks a week times 52 bucks, uh, 52 weeks a year, that ends up being a lot of money. And that's just on a couple of basic tasks. So if you're taking some of those tasks away from your people, um, it sort of uh, reduces the need for some of that human interaction, which means we don't have our humans doing some of these more menial tasks. We actually have them doing real problem solving, which is really what you wanna be doing, which is really what they wanna be doing. The last thing I wanna say, the last word on ChatGPT is that I can see a future, right? I've done a lot of research on this. If you spend time on TikTok or even going deep on Instagram, um, you can find ways that people are using it. I've seen these uh, ChatGPT as it's integrated with online ordering and literally you can talk to it. You can type in and in real time, you can tell it what you want and it'll just keep updating the order and it's 99% right. At least the examples I've seen, it's outstanding there's a there's a uh, there's a future right we do this with alexa right i can say i'm not going to say it because she's going to pop on if i say it but i can say hey alexa can you please order me blah 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 and you know they'll order it and it'll just be shipped to you right They've, they've, they've made ordering, spending money very, very easy. You can do the same for your customers. Again, there's nothing new here. Amazon has been perfecting this for the last five or 10 years, right? Apple does this. Now, other people are doing this. You can simply utilize this for your own benefits. And if we're not using it, we're going to be left in the dust because I think five years from now, the expectation is going to be that I shouldn't have to type in or search or whatever. I can just say, hey, I'm in the mood for this. Please order me, you know, I'm in the mood for sushi. Please order me a spider roll, a rainbow roll, two pieces of salmon nigiri, two pieces of tuna sushi, uh, two pieces of tuna sashimi. 
and they'll just order it for you. And they'll say, hey, here are the five places around you that can deliver in, within the next 30 minutes. Here are the prices uh, accordingly. Man, you can just see how that happens. I can say, this is, these are the things I want. Two rolls, four pieces of sushi. Please, please farm it out. I could tell the system, and they could tell me, this place it's going to cost $42. This place is going to cost $55. This one is going to be $48. This one is going to be $62. And you can decide which one you want to go with. You want to go with the cheapest, the most convenient, the one you know, right? There's an easy application for this on the consumer side, which means on the merchant side, we have to be addressing it, right? The other thing that I that I think about a lot is in terms of uh, an online reservationist, right? Letting ChatGPT really be your your host, your reservations, the person who's fielding customer service and fielding all of that stuff on 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 the phones, right? Instead of having somebody man the phones, you can have a, a computer system do this. Likewise, I think there's going to be a time in the future, probably sooner than we think, where all of us are basically going to have our own ChatGPT concierge that we're going to say. Hey, I'm going to LA next week. I'd like to dine out three times. I'd like one of them at least to be some sort of Asian cuisine. I'd like one to be a really upscale, fancy Michelin star meal. Uh, the third one, I don't care. Just make sure it's really popular and well-rated. Please book me three reservations. And they'll come back and say, hey, here are the options I have available for you. Now, is that you picking up the phone? Is that you trying to negotiate, trying to you to squeeze in? No, but they're giving you options. Right. Or when you're going to be out, uh, you know, entertaining clients. I see. I think a lot of people are like, hey, I'm going to be in Vegas entertaining clients uh, for these four nights. Please build me an itinerary. There's going to be opportunity where we're going to tell the system to go do this stuff for us. It's going to go and talk to the system at the restaurant and they're going to figure it all out on their own. They're going to come back with the options. You're going to make the final choice. You're going to say, yes, yes, no, please come up with a different option for Thursday night. Uh, but otherwise, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday are totally fine. Please re please find another option for Thursday night. That is not too far into the future because the um, because the, the the technology is that sophisticated. Again, the main point of this was to introduce you to ChatGPT. It is literally a chatbot. It looks like you're chatting with somebody. You ask it a real question in real plain English, and it will spit out an answer in plain English. You can ask it just simple questions. It will give you simple answers, or you can ask it to do more, right? Like I've been asking it to do. Please uh, give me 10 social media captions for this dish. Please write a 500 word blog post. And it'll do that. It'll literally spit out. It spit out that 500 word blog post in less than 30 seconds, which is incredible to me. And the system is only getting better. It's learning more, the more people use it, right? That's AI, artificial intelligence, it's machine learning. It learns, the more people use it, the better it gets, the more data it has to pull from which is a really, really exciting thing. So again, it can make your job more efficient. It can give you hours back in your day. It can give you money back in your payroll because you don't have people doing really simple tasks like this. And I believe in the end, if we integrate it into online ordering, into reservations, things like that, I think it can effectively drive more revenue for us. I think you could probably man our reservation book better than a human could, could do because human beings, Customer says, hey, I'd like table for four at seven o'clock. And the hostess says, I'm sorry, we don't have seven o'clock available. Right now I can do either 615 or 815, right? And they say, no, you really got to do, and there's this negotiation going on. But if we can leave it to the computer system, if that's all it is, right, the computer just does it, I think the computer's going to have a better time getting people in than a human being could because there's only so many people man manning the phones. There are only so many open phone lines at a, at a time. I think we can handle more calls coming in. We can handle more orders, more reservation requests, on and on. That's ChatGPT. I hope you got some value from this. Really what I hope out of this is that you go and you explore, you experiment with the software. It's a lot of fun. It's weird, it's scary, but it's a lot of fun. And if you find any other uh, ways to use it, any real applications, use cases, please email me, chip at chipclose.com. That's C-H-I-P. K-L-O-S-E.com. You know I answer each and every email that I get. Let me know how you used it and what you know, what the result was, what the response was. In any event, I appreciate you being here. appreciate that you taking the time out of your day to sit here, listen to me, learn from me. Uh, we're all learning at the same time, and, uh, and I appreciate this community that we're building. Again, appreciate listening to the Restaurant Strategy Podcast, and I will see you next time.